These pictures depicting the Abu Simbel temples by David Roberts are as he found them in 1838, ravaged by looting and ruined by the sand. They'd been erected in 1244 BC between the first and second cataracts of the River Nile. Carved into the mountainside, four colossal statues of the pharaoh Ramesses II. By the 20th century, they had been restored through modern archaeology. Come the 1960s, the temples were about to be lost again. Egypt needed electricity. In a nation-building exercise, they constructed the Aswan High Dam. Progress was about to flood the site. So it was decided that the temple should be saved. They had to be moved. They were carefully dismantled and relocated 200 feet above and 600 feet west of their original site. Around the same time that this was going on in the desert plains of North Africa, something else was going on in the mountain wilderness of Tasmania. This painting by William P. Genet from 1881 is titled Mount Ida, Lake St. Clair, Tasmania. It's a romantic depiction of the location before it was flooded in the 1930s by the Tasmanian Hydroelectric Commission. One of the many lakes in Tasmania that were destroyed for the purposes of making electricity. Now, in the heart of the southwest of the state, two new lakes will be created to become Australia's largest water storage with an area of nearly 200 square miles. Lake Gordon will be created by the building of a concrete dam on the Gordon River, and Lake Pedda will be formed by the erection of two smaller dams. The existing Lake Pedda, set in the centre of this huge, almost flat valley, will disappear when the water level is raised by 50 feet. This small lake, nearly a thousand feet above sea level and surrounded by spectacular mountain ranges, has on its eastern shore a magnificent beach formed by thousands of years of wave action and westerly winds and said to contain anything from two to three million tonnes of pure pink quartz sand. Lake Pedder was already a national park when the Hydro began planning, in secret, to destroy it. Borrowing money, building access roads and designing the dams. They worked on the assumption that they could do what they want and when the time came, the Tasmanian Parliament would provide a rubber stamp. But locals were upset when they discovered what was going to happen. Resistance quickly emerged. The destruction was condemned by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, as well as by the likes of Prince Philip and Sir Edmund Hillary. On a national level, the federal Whitlam government had signed a World Heritage Treaty at the United Nations, and they toyed with the idea of using this external power to stop the flooding at Lake Pedder, but they did not. Tasmanian Premier Eric Rees remained immovable. He said at the time, I'm not entitled to be made a bloody goat of this and I don't propose to be kicked all over the footpath. As far as Lake Pedder is concerned, the sooner they fill it up, the better. In Tasmania, no Labor or Liberal members gave voice to the growing public sentiment that the lake should be saved. This failure of leadership led to the foundation of the world's first Greens Party, an organisation that would later be victorious in the battle for the Franklin River. In 1972, the Hydroelectric Commission dammed the Gordon River and its tributary, the Serpentine River, as well as the Upper Huon River at Scotts Peak. The national park was obliterated. Lake Pedder was flooded to a depth of 15 metres. After it was all done, Hydro boss Alan Knight remarked of his accomplishment. Going back 30,000 years, it was said to have been a lake over the whole area, but the water cut a channel out of it, and the bulk of that flat area that is now the enlarged Lake Pedder was in fact a lake years ago. What we've done is restore what was there many years ago. Two decades later, in 1995, the unlikely Tony Abbott said, Draining Lake Pedder may be good politics as well as good sense. Distaste for the extreme green demands is no reason to reject sensible parts of their agenda. A federal government could commission a definitive cost-benefit study and, given a favourable result, to fund the restoration of an important national project. When Tony Abbott became Prime Minister, he did none of these things. Botanist Dick Jones wrote of his first visit to the original lake. I was surprised by my reaction to Lake Pedder. 
really were surprised at the impact that it had on me as a physical place. The whole combination of flying in, the place was filled with cloud, the sun was shining brightly above. We circled a couple of times, then dived down through this cloud to this incredible beach. Then, being on the ground, looking at swirling mists around me, the mountains and the water and native vegetation, it seemed to be all there in this one little place. Not only that, but the moods were so ephemeral. They came and they went, so that you could get enormously different experiences in the one place. You could go back to it again and again. An assessment done by the hydro before the dam was finished concluded that there would be not much disturbance of the submerged landscape because there would be little movement of the water below. Recently, a team of divers went beneath the surface of the lake. When they got to the floor, they met the beach still intact. Using their torches to break through the darkness, they looked closely at the pure pink quartz sand. Running ahead in lines of two were tyre marks, left behind by the wheels of the last planes to take off before the flood came.